the next leader of the Ontario Liberal Party and the next Premier of Ontario, Mr. Stephen Del Duca. A year ago, the Ontario Liberals were searching for a new leader. After 15 years in power, they'd been kicked to the curb in the 2018 election. It was a particularly nasty defeat, one that saw them lose official party status, but one that they're trying to build back from. So a year ago, they held a convention here in Toronto and picked a new leader. That leader, Stephen Del Duca, was quickly and unbeknownst to him, effectively put into the witness protection program because we hit the COVID lockdown. But despite that, the Ontario Liberals have been able to make it so that they are now second in the polls ahead of the official opposition NDP, and they've been able to do fundraising that has let them retire their debt and start building up a war chest to the next election. Stephen Del Duca, Ontario Liberal leader, joins me now. And uh, I don't know if I should say happy one year anniversary, Stephen, or what does it feel like one year after? I, you know, we're all living in this different world that yeah. I was with you. I, w I was at the convention yeah. when you won. None of us were yeah. expecting at that point what we've been living with. So what's the first year as li Liberal leader been like in the province of Ontario? Well, look, it, it, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to be with you today. Uh, many parts of the one year anniversary remind me of how challenging the last 365 or so days has been. Yes, for me in a political sense, but more so for Ontarians who struggle with the disruptiveness of the pandemic. It's been a really tough year all around. And you're 100 percent right, Brian. There was there was no way heading into that convention weekend where I think we were the last large gathering of any kind in Ontario uh, um, before we entered the first lockdown to know that everything would be turned upside down so soon afterwards. So uh, there are moments where I'm really blown away by how much the Ontario Liberal Party has accomplished given the circumstances. And there are other moments when I, you know, I pause and reflect on how tough it's been for the people of Ontario and people right around the world over these last 12 months. O Ontario is definitely not the worst in the country. You compare us to the United States or Western Europe doing much better than a lot of peer places but obviously with some balls dropped. So what would you have done differently than what Premier Ford and his cabinet have done? Uh, it's a great question. So I, I have a few observations about that. I, I would say, first of all, and I've been saying this throughout the pandemic, in those earliest weeks and even first couple of months, politicians, leaders, governments at all levels, right across Canada and beyond, really struggled to respond. And that's not a shot at anyone, including Doug Ford. We were, we were hit so hard and it was so disruptive uh, it was obviously going to be tough for any political leader to respond, let's say, perfectly in those earliest mm. days. So I, I have no, I have no real complaint with any political leader trying to deal with kind of the the eye of the hurricane in those earliest those earliest times. I think over time, as we've seen more and more decisions get made, and I don't say I don't say this because I expect perfection, and I don't believe the people of Ontario do either. But there are a couple of, I think, really important things that I take away from Doug Ford's performance. First of all, it turns out that like in life, in government, experience does matter. And so this is not it's not a partisan comment. I think when you reflect on the fact that neither the premier himself nor most, if not all of his cabinet, maybe with the exception of one or two, had ever had the chance to serve in leadership roles within government, I think made it that much tougher for them. And as a result, tougher for Ontarians when we were confronted with the second wave in the fall, when the numbers took off and went the wrong way, when we saw Ontario lagging behind other provinces in areas like testing, contact tracing, dealing with long-term care in an effective way, and, and small business supports, as you alluded to a second ago. And the other thing is, in the midst of a, a public health crisis, when people really have to rely on government to support them and be there for them, it's awfully hard to lead a government in a time of crisis when fundamentally you don't actually believe in government. And that's kind of the other problem that I see coming from, from Doug Ford himself and his team. Uh, they are obviously people who do not believe that government is ideally positioned to do the work, the important work that I think government is responsible for. And I would say that at the best of times, Brian, but during a crisis in particular, people need effective government, competent government, there to back them up and support them. And I just think it's impossible to bridge that gap when you're Doug Ford and you fundamentally don't believe in the, the positive part of what government can do. Uh, despite the uh, all the speculation, including from people like myself, that federally we're heading to a vote in June, uh, Premier Doug Ford has been pretty clear. He does not want to seek an early mandate, doesn't think it's right in, in the middle of a pandemic. I hope he keeps his word on that. Uh, I'm sure <laughs> you do as well. 
but you have been able to position yourself poll-wise with just over a year to go, well, about a year until the campaign would officially kick off. You're in second place in most of the, the polls. I know the answer politicians always give on polls. The only one that matters is voting day. But I also know that you guys love them when you're up. You hate them when you're down. You're kind of in the middle. You're ahead of Andrea Horvath in the NDP, but you're well back of, of the Tories. So you must take some pride that you've been able to move up from below 20%, but still frustrated that uh, you're well back of the government. Well, look, I think I think you're right about the way politicians traditionally answer that that question or any question relating to polls. I will say, you know, it's not really fair or appropriate to be selective about which polls you like versus not like or don't like. And I, I look, this is one of the reasons I do not put a lot of faith or stock in the public opinion polling that we see between election campaigns. Obviously, I'm encouraged because of the progress that I believe we've made as a party. But our decimation two and a half years ago wasn't that long ago. And we still have so much work to do to earn the trust of the people of Ontario. I have a lot of work to do to introduce myself to the voters here in this province, to give them a sense that they can trust me to govern Ontario. So regardless of what we see in a poll, whether we're up or we're down, I'm taking nothing for granted. I'm a hard worker by nature. I believe in the relentless sort of effort that produces the rewards people look for in life. And so that's what I'm gonna keep doing along with the rest of the Ontario Liberal team and try to focus on the people of this province and their future rather than the ups and the downs of the polling that we see on a weekly or monthly basis. Uh, Stephen Del Duca, congratulations on one year as leader of the Ontario Liberal Party. We'll be watching you over the next year. Hopefully we'll all be able to get out and, and, and see each yeah. other in person again as yeah. opposed to campaigning. I don't imagine you'd like to do a general election in this format, would you? <laughs> I, look, I think right about now, everybody in this province is just looking forward to getting a vaccine for those who want it, getting to the other side of this pandemic and rebuilding our province, their lives. Nobody wants an election right now. Uh, this is not the time for politics. This is the time for rebuilding and, and enduring. All right, Stephen Del Duca, thank you very much. Thank you, Ryan.